I'm actually just a web developer that works both Drupal and WordPress. I, I've been doing Drupal since Drupal 5, and I've been doing WordPress like nine years, since nine, nine years ago, and it's still going. Um, I'm kind of an odd one. I kind of like both of them. I don't have this kind of preference which one you like most or whatever. I like both of them in a the sense like they, both of them has different uh, capacity and actually challenge me in a, a different way. So I prepare a, a, you know, a very uh, generic um, what suits best for individual WordPress or Drupal. So very obvious, Drupal, um, very good with um, for medium to large build. And as for WordPress, it's only for small to medium. Um, there is a lot of component in there that sort of not very friendly for developers. So it's really hard you know, to, to get extension. And also it's not really a bug. Like they always have lots of bugs and things coming through. And obviously Drupal doesn't have e-commerce at the moment for Drupal 8. So I really miss the Drupal 7 one. That was really good. Um, WordPress has e-commerce and obviously that one is just like an extension for it. And it has been doing really, really well. Um, and it's always out there. People start, you know, when new startup, they need e-commerce, they will go with WordPress. That's what I see because that's, that's how easily it can be start off, start off from there. Um, for Drupal, it's more complex on data structures and workflows, so it works really well with that. But for WordPress, it only works well for simple data structure and minimal workflow because WordPress doesn't build for that and everything that they have over there is very minimal because it's, it's all based on marketing strategy kind of stuff and also SEO kind of element. So that, that's the reason why it's really different when I work with Drupal or WordPress. Um, when it comes to design, uh, Drupal is always, you know, you have to design based on the Drupal structure. Otherwise, you know, things doesn't work pretty well that way. But obviously you can do headless Drupal. That's another section for it. Um, for WordPress, it works with any design uh, because, you know, it's just sort of like a plug and play. So there's a lot of design out there. You can just do it with theming and stuff. And they already do um, headless WordPress. So a lot of developers, a lot of uh, designers has already start going into that path. Um, and when it comes to budget, so obviously Drupal require a bigger budget and it, it's more expensive to develop in that sense. But when you compare to WordPress, it's cheaper. Uh, it can, you know, it's just easy install and then get it up and running and then off you go with all the themes and, and stuff that you can do with it. Um, so both are customizable. Uh, you can you know, do a lot of extension, uh, plugins, module, and you know anything that you need, you want to do, you can just do that from there. But one thing I really see is that Drupal has a really steep learning curve. You know, when somebody new coming in, even though they have PHP background or you know MySQL background, but they still need to learn the structural way of Drupal, how it works and stuff. But when it comes to WordPress, it's really easy to pick up, easy to learn because everything is just function, um, just PHP. Basically, that's it. And I'm just coming through with this, you know, Drupal versus uh, WordPress in a whole structure way. So first thing first, looking at the core files. WordPress is very lightweighted. It's only like 14 meg with the zip file compared to Drupal 9 core is 28.3 meg. And, and that is like, you know, the, the thing to see like how, um, how small and, and how lightweight it is, uh, Drupal, con uh, WordPress compared to Drupal. So that, that's what you can see from here. And then when it comes to database, um, WordPress like to use serialized format. So all the, uh, that's the reason why they are really compact because they use serialized. And, it's, and also another way of like, it's really hard to um, sort of create a data structure from there because everything is serialized. It's really hard to debug when you need to debug as well. Uh, and also it, for the, the config structure, it actually have one table uh, store all the config in there and all with serialized. You need to like find the name of it and then you need to go and pinpoint and get through it. Whereby in Drupal, it's really clear. All the database is relational databases. Um, it's all out there. You, if you want to debug back end, it's easily to debug. You don't have any, you know, you don't have to worry about something that might corrupt it or, or whatsoever because it's really unlikely. But well, where I, you know, WordPress because it's serialized, if, you know, one part is like extra, um, extra semicolon or whatsoever, it's, it's not going to be working. So that is another different pro and cons in there. And when it comes to security, um, 
it's always hands down with Drupal. Drupal always better security compared to WordPress, but WordPress rely, rely on external uh, plugins, which we call WorkFence. And, and that one actually works really well with WordPress and they make it really secure. And WordPress is already well known uh, easily being hacked and a lot of malicious code. So that's an, another hands down for Drupal. And yeah, so moving forward to core modules and plugin updates. Um, for WordPress, I really like it when they have auto updates, um, which means that the module, you know, when the core uh, needs to be updated, it's just automatically update. You don't have to worry about it. But obviously that's another downside of it when doing the automatic update in a sense like you wouldn't know the newest version will work well with your plugins. So for example, I think during um, 5.0 versions comes out, um, that wasn't really fully tested. And a lot of um, other plugins was like broken. So what happened is like um, the core team has to like really roll out the second version like within two or three days just to fix that. So it's kind of like that section, they have that, you know, perfect for auto update, but at the same time, they are not fully tested. So that's another issue at, at, at WordPress, but whereby in Drupal, everything has a security tested. So everything has to be tested 100% before rolled out. And obviously, you know, as a developer, you know, you just have to go in there and then making sure it works for you before you release to the production site. So that's the pro and cons on, on the, on the uh, auto update. I like it in a sense if it's really minimal, like for example, just update uh, plugins or module, that would be great. And that way, you know, minimum, uh, you know, minimum way to manage and then making sure everything is fine, is going through because it's the module update. But obviously when it comes to like um, bigger version, everything has to be uh, precautious in that way. And next one is actually the modules and plugins, how it actually, um, the difference that I see in the sense that the community, um, community spirit in a way. Um, for WordPress, everything seems, everyone seems to do their own work. Like they just create multiple plugins. You can see multiple, like you, you, if you search Instagram, you can see multiple Instagram plugins out there. Like that's no sort of like saying uh, which one is the best one to do, which one is the, you know, is a great one because there's nobody sit there and say that like, this is duplicate. You shouldn't release that, those kind of stuff. But compared to Drupal, because it's, it's restricted in a sense that, you know, if it's duplicated, people will say it's duplicated. You shouldn't, you know, go with that or showing which one is the best plugin to use for. And because of Drupal has the um, the security, um, the security testing going on, it's actually very robust in a way. You don't have to worry about that plugin will ruin your site or will actually introduce some malicious code or whatever. But for uh, WordPress, there's no security testing. It only able to test like which version of core that it works for and which PHP version that it will it will works with and stuff like that. And then off you go. You are the you are the main tester. If anything's that being hacked, then you are the one that oh no, this is the module that's not you know good for me. I have to get rid of it. I have to clean my site now. So that is the pro and cons on that. But the pro on on WordPress that I see. Um, the way that they structure the module, they even have those tabs in the different tabs, like, you know, having the installation uh, info telling you how to install it and also having the support uh, channel over there, which means that people who find any bugs, they just go to that support and then just immediately, you know, put in their comments saying what they find and stuff. And it's all condensed in one place. So it's easier for the maintainer to look into it and then to pick it up and respond. And, and, obvi and obviously the difference is Drupal, you can actually create a patch. So you can do patching and stuff, but for WordPress, you don't do, you, there's no capabilities to do that. So it all depends on the support channel that you talk to, um, you know, you talk to the, the creator and then the creator will do the patch on that side. So that's the difference on what I see as a module. And as for REST API, WordPress, core came with it and it's already enabled by default um, whereby Drupal you need a module you know to, to hook onto it and then get it working so WordPress is already there uh, it's out there and people has been using this concept to create hateless WordPress 
or you know, headless uh, theming, all this kind of stuff. And it works really well with a lot of API integration uh, that go around it. So you can actually do a lot of uh, integration easily just with WordPress. So when it comes to content migration, um, I find that WordPress content migration is very, very simple. Um, you can just easily export the content and it's actually in XML format. And for example, um, WordPress version three and WordPress version five is such a huge different version. But if somebody wants to upgrade it straight away to version five, what we need to do is actually just export the XML file do an import into the new platform and then off you go. But obviously when it comes to, um, if there's certain you know, custom content type that's been created or whatever, that will be need an extra step to do migration. So, um, and then comparing with Drupal that I have um, some experience with, which is migrating Drupal 7 to Drupal 8, it was a little bit of a nightmare and it's required a lot of time. But although, although uh, thanks to the Drupal migration module, you know, it's sort of not that bad, but obviously, hopefully, hopefully it's not gonna have this kind of headache in the future. So that is the only thing that I want to raise that for. Um, so when it comes to media library, this is the one I'm pretty excited with. I find that, you know, WordPress is very simple, uh, the way that they deal with media library, the way that, you know, you can list and, and look at, if it's a thumbnail, you can look at the picture straight away, or you can list it out, that's not a problem. But only thing that they don't have uh, file revision, so which means that if the file being deleted uh, or you need to replace a new file, it just deleted immediately and there's no source of you know, finding out what happened to the old file or is a mistake of removing it, you couldn't get it back. So the only thing you can get it back is actually through your backup file, but obviously it depends on how, how long you back up your file or how often you do that. And also they have an easily replaced images, which means you go to the media and then you just remove the image um, and then you just upload a new file and off you go. So, which is really cool. And they do have like bulk upload as well. So when the, the con is actually, you can't create a custom media types, like you can't say that um, I want to create a album, album one, but you can't do that. So it's only you know, restricted to library and it's as a whole include video. So you can't even segregate say that I only want video in that section, I only want this one in images. You can't do that, unfortunately. Uh, and also you can't create a custom field. So anything that you want to expand, expand from there, you can't do it. It's all uh, defaulted with WordPress. So that is the difference between Drupal, Drupal, we can do that. That's not an issue. We can just modify based on what we want uh, based on the field and everything, so which is great. So this is how it looks like for the media library, and that's how it is. And then you can search, uh, you can do a bulk select just to you know do something else. And then when it comes to embedding file, it's pretty cool. You can actually create a gallery. You can create you know a, a audio playlist, video playlist, and then um, you just embed into into the uh, the body content, and it just be there. And also you can embed like Vimeo, uh, YouTube, using the insert from URL and it just do responsively. So it's all there uh, out as a call and it's pretty cool. And then for each images, it, there's already a preset of um, fields that they give it to you. Like, like what I mentioned previously, you can't create you know, a new custom field. Uh, it's all pre-made over there. So obviously this is very useful for SEO, um, marketing as well and, and all those kind of stuff. And that's why it's there. So let's move to um, user role. User role, hands down with Drupal. Drupal, amazing. Like I, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't take it away. Um, Rose is the best uh, to, to work on any, any CMS uh, whereby WordPress is not that great. You need to you know, go through an external plugins to, you know, get it work on permission row. But obviously it's not, it's not that straightforward, like what we see on, on uh, Drupal. Uh, the way that they, they do the rows is very minimal. You can, like it's just saying that you can edit, uh, view or delete and that's it. So it's not really like something comprehensive that was done in, in Drupal. So that's the, 
totally hands down for Drupal to having that sort out. And it's like the best thing ever. And when it comes to content type, well, Drupal comes with it. It's already part of the code. You can create um, multiple content type, multiple custom fields, not an issue. Uh, it just work as it is. But for WordPress, you have to um, install an external plugins just to make it work. And same thing, you need to inst not only install one, you have to install two because one is to create a content type. The other one is actually to create a custom field. It's like you just bogged down with two plugins. So it's, it's like extra, um, you know, extra overhead in that sense. And when it comes to path auto or uh, Parmalink, they call it Parmalink in WordPress, um, it's, it actually comes with it. So WordPress comes with it with the core, but the only uh, downside is like you can't configure it based on content type. So everything is just very level one. There's no level two, level three, uh, you know, unless you actually define it saying parents, then you will get the parents URL and then append to the child URL, that kind of stuff. So it's not that great. I would still like uh, Drupal, although it's an you know, extension on, on the module, but it's, it still works great uh, for Drupal in that sense. Now, when it comes to a content workflow, um, I wouldn't stress more. Drupal is the best on content workflow. You know, having having the way that we create, how to drive, uh, publish, and then archive or whatever whatever content uh, workflow you want to create, that's fine. But for WordPress, it's not that great. It's very very like I say, it's very level one. Um, you can what you can do is only like publish, unpublish, or send it to drive. Um, but the only cool thing that they have is actually uh, sex scheduling on publish. Like for example, you create a, a, a content, but you don't want to publish it now, but you want to publish it tomorrow at six o'clock, you can schedule that and it just work brilliantly for you. But obviously I would, you know, if I could, uh, I would prefer WordPress to have like a workflow like Drupal. Uh, that way, you know, when whoever creates something that is already published, uh, and then if there are any changes, we can just save it as draft so that the new change will not be viewed by anyone. And then the old change will still be out there accessible. But unfortunately, WordPress doesn't do that. It, you can either publish or draft or delete. So that, that is the, the downside of it. And my conclusion comes in, in a sense like if you know a website, that, if you need a website is small with a really tight budget, WordPress is the best choice to go for. And if you need, you know, uh, e-commerce and stuff, WordPress is the way to go. But if you have a complex design, com uh, bigger budget, uh, if you can afford it, Drupal is the best choice to go for. And that's the only thing I can think of. And also one thing is a silly thing that I think, uh, if one day Drupal and WordPress decide to coll collaborate together, it would be great to see a hybrid CMS uh, because both of them has a pro and cons in that sense. Um, and, and it will be great to really see the hybrid coming on, but I don't think that will be happening. 